So go ahead, Nate. Let's go, baby. So from from now until next year, and this is might be too simplistic, but how do you get these guys to make jump shots? <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky I have a good sense of humor. I'll, yeah, yeah, I will just go throw this water bottle at you. Um, it's repetition. We're, we're, we're youthful, and we get amped up out there, and we get sped up. I think with every passing year, you get a, everything slows down a little bit, especially for for guys like John Johnson, you know, uh, Jordan Dickerson, Geno Thorpe, Graham. I think this pace of the game will slow down. And um, I think that's when you're going to start to see shots go down. Plus, the, you know, with, with experience, I think you start to see shots go down. We're, we're going to have seniors and juniors next year, which, which is exciting. So hopefully, look, we worked hard. We've been going since July, really, because you have eight weeks in the summer now. And then you got ten practices. Um, it was a long, long, long year of a lot of ups and a lot of downs and a lot of highs and a lot of lows but i think because of all the experience i think it'll pay off in the end did, did you see in kind of reflection were they open shots were, were people getting into the positions that you wanted them to be in to take those shots i would say yes and no there were some really really good shots and then there were some contested shots um, and that's what you get with youth sometimes and that's what you get uh, when a guy thinks he's got to do it by himself um, Look, we had a consistent two scorers. Towards the end here, we only had really one. Um, you know, you're not going to win a lot of games that way. And, and we can get stops. I mean, our defense was number one, defending the two anyway, number eight, defending the three. We're going to get stops. You can only stop somebody for so, for so long, though. you got to put the ball in the basket. Um, so that's going to be our focus. Um, just, I think we do a great job of player development. Um, DJ Newbill is a perfect example of that. Uh, where he was, changing his shot, you know, second team, I mean, it's pretty impressive. I think you're going to see Brandon Taylor fall in line with that. I think Jordan Dickerson and Geno Thorpe, guys like that. I, I think you're going to see uh, we're going to work very hard this offseason in, in development like we do every year. Just one more with that. Is there, is there a lot of that that you see in terms of actually changing shots and technique and that kind of stuff that needs to be done? There's season? only a couple guys that we really want to tweak um, that we'll that we'll look at and, and visit, um, but it's up to them. It's up to them to want to do it and sacrifice. Um, you know, playing pickup things like that, and and just do it kind of like DJ did. I mean, he, he's going back this week and doing it. We call them checkups. He's going back this week. He's not going to leave the paint. He wants to make sure he keeps those habits. And uh, again, I give him a lot of credit. But some other guys are going to have to do that. Was there any level of disappointment in the percentage of three-point shots that you made uh, in games compared to what you did in practice? Because you talked a lot about guys earning the right to take shots, yet their percentages may not have reflected how good they were. Yeah, I, f I felt like, look, I, I felt like before the season started, we needed to make seven threes to be competitive. Um, I thought we were competitive. I mean, we were in ten games, right? Less than six. And I can go down and rattle. I'm sure you guys could, too. Um, if you make one of those, if you do get to seven, you win those games. Hell, if you get to six, you might win, win those games, you know. Um, we were making them, again, you're playing against great teams in the Big Ten that are going to speed you up a little bit longer, a little bit more athletic, so you're not taking an in-rhythm shot. Um, in the non-conference, man, we, had, we really looked good, even though we lost a couple tough games, of sharing the basketball. Really shared the basketball, did some good things. I don't know if if it was the defenses in the Big Ten or, or, or our guy, our, you know, Tim and DJ felt like they had to take more responsibility and take more shots, but we, we got to do a better job of making threes in games. There's no question. How, how do you go about improving that? I guess I know you, you got to recruit it. You got to recruit. You know, I feel like we have good shooters. I, I really do. I mean, Donovan didn't make many towards the end. Brandon Taylor was hit or miss. Um, DJ was hit or miss. Um, John Johnson was hit or miss. I mean, I could go down the line of, of hit or miss. Uh, again, I think the game slows down for you, and they got to work on it this summer, and we got to develop it, and we got to make more threes. There's no question about it. One other significant disparity in the stats, it didn't seem as if you got to the line as much as your opponents, and I'm sure that could open up a whole plethora of things for you to talk about. But was that 
a product of officiating or you guys not doing what you needed to do? Before the season, I think you guys recall this, I was excited about the rule change. Right. I thought Frazier would live at the line. I don't think he got a favorable whistle. I really don't. Um, I'm not sure Newbill did. Um, I thought those guys really did a good job of getting downhill, getting in the paint. Heck, Wisconsin's in the Final Four. We scored 50 points in the paint against those guys. 50. 50. But yet, you know, we, we, we're just not getting to the line at, at, at a rate that I thought. And when we did, it was usually success. When we hit, what, four or five threes and we got to the line 20, 25 plus times, that usually was a good sign that we'd probably win that game. Um, I'd like to get the line a lot more, you're right. And I'd like to foul less on, on my side, which we did uh, the last, you know, 10 or 12 games. I thought we did a much better job of playing hard without fouling. Uh, now, I mixed up the defenses and I did some creative things on our end to prevent that stuff, but it, it's definitely a focus, you know, going into next season of playing hard without fouling and us getting to the line. And, and I think it's all about straight line drives and going strong and tough and physical. I kind of sound like a football coach there, but it's it's the truth. When when you know Minnesota, I'll take the Matthew number for the point guard. He just went straight line drives and goes really hard, and you know what goes up and gets to the line. And we got to do a better job of that. You're talking about player development, and that's really one of those areas where you can try and make up ground on maybe some of these other teams because you can't bring in guys every year, but you can work on making them better. Uh, you're limited with the amount of hands-on work you can do, but what does that program look like to kind of get some of these guys better in different kinds of areas between now and next season? Well, we got three weeks here. We'll start up next week. You know, we gave them a little time off, which I think they needed. Uh, and then we get eight weeks in the summer. And during that time, it's really about the individual. And it's really about, you know, really tailoring their workouts to honing your strengths and then getting better at your weaknesses. And, and that's what we have to do. Um, obviously, under the rules of, uh, of compliance, we have to uh, make sure that that time is valuable and well spent. And for example, uh, working on somebody's left, like Geno Thorpe, got to work on his left. He's got to work on his handling a little bit. I'd like to see DJ go left a little bit more. So we're going to work on that. Um, you know, obviously, three-point shooting will be a, a big focus. But uh, I think with these guys getting a little bit older, a little bit more mature, that'll all work itself out. And, and hockey actually runs captain run practices where they do everything they kind of get some instructions and then do it all on their own is that something that you that you want to see you know maybe a dj go out and run a middle of the summer kind of practice that'd be great i mean it's up to the captain so you could yeah. continue on the theme of development um you know last year there were players for different reasons that they could have came back to this team things maybe didn't work out i mean jermaine marshall and sasha a few other players um, you seem like you have kind of a core here that you really like and want to develop. How do, how do you kind of prevent something like that happening um, on to next year and kind of keep that core um, together? Look, we, we did everything we could to keep Jermaine and Sasha. Um, Sasha was ready to go, and that's understand, understandable. I mean, obviously Jermaine did what he had to do. I thought we did all, all the right things for Jermaine. Um, I, I like this core. I like this team. And um, I, I think we did a lot of incredible things this year. I mean, foreign tour going to New York, um, we were very creative and innovative with practice, um, just doing different things. So hopefully they want to stay. Uh, we don't want anybody to go. And we like our team. We like, uh, again, we like where we're headed. We're close. Um, ten games. Ten games. One possession here, one possession there, a rebound, uh, one less turnover, uh, a made shot, a made free throw. Made three free throw. Um, we're, we're sitting up here thinking, okay, you went to the NCAA tournament. <laughs> Now you got to do it back to back. How does that pressure feel? You know, but unfortunately, it's not that way. Um, but I like to think that this core group is going to stick together. You know, from last year, the DJ can play the point if he has to. But you know, saw him at the two this year. What he can do there. Who else do you want to see? And will you have to see step up the point next season or in this offseason? What I would tell you is, and DJ played a lot of point this year. If you think about it. Um, especially in the last 12 games of the season. Uh, I really just had him and Tim and moved Tim off the ball, put DJ on the ball. So, I mean, he, he, he did it last year, and he had some good reps this year. Uh, is there a chance for DJ to play the point next year? Yeah, no question. He can do it. He, I, don't, I don't know if I want to do, him to do it for 40, but I'd like him, yeah, I'd like him to do it for some of the game. Um, Gino Thorpe's going to have a chance. Shep Garner's going to have a chance. Graham Woodward's going to have a chance. Um, and, of course, DJ. So you got four guys that are going to fight fight it out for, for that number one spot, which is good. It's healthy competition. 
but it's going to be for the be the best chemistry, what's best for the team. It's going to be a little bit different because you know we, Tim's not here anymore. So things are going to have to, you know, as a head coach, we got to tailor to what our strengths are. And you know, obviously DJ's a strength. I believe Brandon Taylor will be a strength. I think Jordan Dickerson and Donovan Jack will get better and continue to get better. So we got to figure out best ways to put them in the most uh, successful position. You, you mentioned Shep Garner. Uh, just with the incoming freshmen coming in next year, what do you kind of expect out of them, or how do you think that they could fit in uh, with kind of dealing with, I guess, the freshman up and downs that we saw this year? Uh, well, that, that's you're, you're exactly right. I mean, we'll wait. So kind of a wait and see. Hopefully they, you know, we've talked to them all the time. Hopefully they come in ready to go, in shape, prepared. This is a, this is not a little step up. This is a giant leap from high school to the Big Ten. Obviously, three teams being in the Elite Eight shows you how great this league is, top to bottom. You know, hopefully they come ready. If they come ready, I give everybody a chance. You, I always say, you earn the right. You earn the right for minutes, and then everybody will have, have a chance to earn the right. What do you like about some of the stuff just from recruiting them and maybe – possibly envision from some of those strengths that you saw in, in recruiting them? Well, I mean, Shep, Shep can play multiple positions, but he's got great leadership qualities. He can shoot. He can drive it. He can make plays for others. He's quick. He's tough. Uh, Isaiah is long. He's rangy. He can jump out of the building. He can shoot threes. He can handle. Um, so you're bringing in two guys that I hope to make an impact or, or definitely earn some minutes. Um, but what they bring is definitely something of toughness and, and leadership and athleticism and skill. Isaiah committed to you guys like a million years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it's finally here. I think I had brown hair when he committed. <laughs> I mean, no. has he kind of progressed the way that you were hoping that he would? I mean, I, I think he had a good year. I mean, it, um, his record won't indicate that his team record, but his individual statistics say that you know he was very solid and did the best he could for his team and, and the hand that they were dealt. Um, so I'm excited about him. And then, I mean, uh, you're talking about these, uh, but Shep, I mean, they make it to the Catholic League Finals. And, you know, they're in the championship. They make a nice run in the States. I mean, he did a lot of good things, too. Do you miss the kid? I'm sorry. I was going to ask about the kids you redshirted. What do you think? Where, I think you guys know you watch some practice. I'm, I'm fired up. Julian Moore's got a high motor, and he's long, and he's athletic. He can run. Um, he, he's going to be a special talent. Now, he's only going to be a freshman, um, but, I, uh, you know, again, you got to put him in games. But in practice, he's doing some good things. Peyton Banks drilled it. He drilled shots day in and day out. He was the best player on every scout team. Uh, he was Gary Harris. You know, he was the Holland, one of the Hollands. He was, you name it, he was that guy. Um, and he did a very, very good job. Um, you know, our simulation practice was as good as it was. It's been since I've been here. Do you necessarily need the shots from the point that you've had the last three years in terms of total numbers? I mean, just with Tim and the DJ. And no, that, that, that's what I'm saying. I have to be prepared to tailor an offense to what our strengths are going to be. So if Graham's the point guard, maybe he's not going to break somebody down, but he's going to initiate, and he's a great shooter. He's our best three-point shooter. So... No, we got to tailor to, to how we can be most successful, and that, that's going to be my challenge. And that, that's a fun challenge, because I feel like we got a good core of, uh, of guys coming back. What do we have? Seventy-five plus percentage of points and minutes, and I mean that's exciting. When I first got here, it was less than twenty, less than twenty, which is crazy. Specifically, Brandon Taylor seems to have made to me. I, Strides. Uh, yeah. I yeah. Do. What was his when he got uh, double figures? What were you, 9-2, 10-2, 10-3, something like that? Yeah. Is, There's a kid who's going to do a lot for us. Is the back-to-the-basket back thing, is that kind of his, is that the? W the progression is threes, even though he hasn't shot a great clip. Threes, mid-range, and we definitely need him to post up because when I played big and played him at the three, he's going to have a smaller guy in him. So he's going to need a little go-to, a little counter, and we're going to work on that in the offseason. You just got to be confident with it. It's all about confidence. Again, we'll go back to your three questions. It's all about confidence. You get that ball and you're open and you, and you feel confident, because I'm not taking you out for missing shots. I, I've never done that. 
team wide? Is that up upstairs? Is that kind of a thing for these guys? Yeah, they they got to know that the, I have confidence. If that's the shot, you think that's the best shot, then okay. In practice is when you're like, right, extra pass, <laughs> you know, extra pass. Put it inside, kick out, extra pass. But in a game, you can't can't be micromanaging every possession, or they won't play freely, or they won't play with confidence. How do you balance the, you know, when you say go big and have Taylor at the three, maybe Jack at the four, yeah. or sometimes you go four guards? How do you balance those lineups depending on the opponent with what you were talking about earlier about getting the guys to play together and getting that chemistry? Yeah, I agree with you. It really depends on who we're playing. If you're playing Mount St. Mary's, you're gonna have to play four guards. Um, Minnesota played small, so we played small. Um, it, it really depends on the scouting report and what's going to be what's going to give us the, the best advantage. Now, some some teams we played big. We, we did play Jack at four and, and Taylor at three, but I think that starts in the locker room. It starts with guys. You know, they they seem they, they like each other. They like being around each other. They're already in the gym. Like they hang out together. So uh, I, I really believe it's taking pride in Penn State and Penn State basketball. And, you know, no matter who's on the floor, this is what we're going to do, and this is how we're going to play, and we're going to play our, as hard as we can. When you look at the overall season, it seems from the outside looking in as if that Princeton game took a lot out of Did you, you have guys. to bring it up? Well, I'm just was I'm that, trying to get over it. Is that it's too more, convenient? It's April 1st. But is that too convenient because it seemed as if it took you a while to recover, and then once you finally did, you played out? You know, fairly well down the stretch. We, we played really well the last 12 games, the last 13 games. Um, you know, if, as a coach, I always look back and say, what could you have done differently those first six? I think Minnesota was a freak. That was just crazy what happened here versus Minnesota. Purdue at Purdue, again, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, it was crazy. You know, a foul at the end, um, you know, just being put in that situation. Um, Tyrone Johnson hits a really difficult fade, like a fadeaway type three. It just like seemed like, you know, whatever we tried went against us. Those things happen. But if you win those two games, well, now you're what two and four. You know, I, I, I mean, the Princeton game hurt us, but it wasn't like we were com we weren't competing. We were up 47-40 on Michigan State. We ran out of gas in the second half. But I mean, I, I don't know if I'm going to put that much stock into Princeton. It did hurt us. Um, but I do feel like we played, we played hard all, pretty much all season. We only got blown out a few times, so I think mean, that's a credit to the kids. You mentioned after that Princeton game that <clears throat> it was a step in the right direction. Obviously, losing wasn't wasn't, but that you guys were kind of the main event in Penn State sports for the weekend. And what do you think you guys need to do? It you know, we need to. to that's a that? you know, it's a good point, and we need to keep doing things like that. And I'm researching things now, something to get some interest for next year. We have to win. Yeah. We have to win. We're at the point where we have to win. Uh, and I understand that. Uh, but I still want to do creative things. Yeah. Fit Philly, Pittsburgh, here, you know, just different ideas, different matchups, getting good teams in here where, where students will come out, things like that. Do you feel like you personally, you guys are in a, you guys are in a mode where you have to win three years into your tenure here, that it's, that it's win? Again, the only pressure I feel is the pressure I put on myself. Yeah. Um, so I feel like we're heading in the right direction. I think 16 wins, what, we, we've done that, what? That's the fourth time since 2000? Yeah, so I, I think, you know, if I was in the real world, I'd be salesman of the year. You know what I mean? Because we went from two wins to six, from 10 to 16, but obviously I'm not in the real world. So it doesn't count it like that. It counts in wins and losses. But I, I like to think we're, we're, we're headed in the right direction. We're, we're making some steps here and some strides. Now with 16 wins this year, and obviously, You've had more than a week now to, you know, since the Siena game to digest the season, and given the Big Ten slate, a week is like, you know, an eternity. Um, you know, what did you pull positives, negatives from the season overall, and then what do you need to you know, move forward, obviously, into next season? You know, I, I haven't really digested that yet. I'm still kind of like, you know, we've been doing this for eight, nine months. I'm still in that mode. I need to get away a little bit and kind of, you know, just look back. Um, but the Big Ten's a tough, it's a tough league, um, and I feel like we're getting better, and I feel like the level of competition, the grant, the field is getting, we're getting closer. I'm not saying we're there yet, but it's getting closer. Um, again, we're, we're 10 games where you're in a two, three possession game where we easily could have flipped it. Uh, we just have to do a better job of finishing next year. 
you talk about those 10 games, and I think a little bit ago you mentioned that you had like 20% of your returning scoring in your first year. Do you think people underappreciate almost the fact that you go from having next to no one when you get here, and, and that these are my words, not yours, and going from that <laughs> to being in essentially every Big Ten game. I mean, a lot of those were turning on a couple of possessions here or there. I mean, the fact that you go from that to where you are now, do you think – that gets undervalued, especially when people watch other teams play in the tournament? It's uh, a good question. I want to I make sure I give you a good answer. Um, I, I do think we're undervalued a little um, for what we've done in, in such a short short time. You know, you get the job late and you're trying to build something. And it's a process. You know, it takes time and we all have to be patient. But I don't know if we're, we were appreciated for what we what we did. Not me, the players. I don't know if they were appreciated for how hard they competed on a nightly basis. Every game, other than a few, you know, I felt like they competed to the best of their ability. And to be sitting here, again, 15, 16 wins is a great jump up from where we were. And and kind of from your perspective, do you feel like, I mean, obviously a lot of those games could have gone your way and you're talking about different things at this point in the year. Do you feel like you got what you wanted out of this year? I mean, are you done with this going we are making a step forward to a certain extent as much as... I got to keep saying that until we get to make that step forward. But I, I think, and I said this to Tim Frazier, I said, you have laid an incredible foundation for us. Maybe you didn't, you know, get the wins or get to the NCAA tournament like you wanted to, but you laid an incredible foundation that's going to help us in future years. I truly believe that. And, I mean, you brought up, Tim, every time that Penn State lost that guy and obviously DJ being here helps you kind of have a leadership void that you have to fill that can kind of not set you back but gives you a different obstacle to kind of overcome how do you try and avoid that with some of the guys that you have returned yeah again I think DJ and some of these other guys are ready to grab the reins and uh, really I don't think we're going to miss a beat when it comes to leadership in the locker room I think it's only going to get better at the top, you said that at the end of the year, it turned into only having one consistent scorer being DJ. What happened exactly with Tim was the, the, the end of the year, really. Was there anything different in his game? That no, you I think teams or? try to take him away. Um, you know, Minnesota pressed him the whole game. He's got to give the ball up. So I don't think he got the great opportunities that we were all hoping he would get. Um, so I'm not going to say it was anything I think let's give credit to the defenses let's give credit to the other guards and the other teams to really try to slow him down I think they did a good job with that have you talked to Tim at all about his plans oh uh, yeah after this year what's he pursuing his he's going to be uh, I don't even know if I can say this can say he, he's going to be in Portsmouth I don't care I'm going to say it <laughs> so we'll he's going to be, be in Portsmouth he's done, so you can ask okay. yeah he'll be in Portsmouth and he, he's we're already starting to work him out uh, individually, and he's already in the weight room, and he's already doing some great things. So um, he took a couple days off, and we, we met, and I said, that's it. We can't take too many days off because in, in a few weeks here, you're going to be battling against you know, some, a lot of great players down in Portsmouth and Virginia, which is exciting that, he, that he's in it. Can you clarify the scholarships? I think you have one. Can you pull in the JUCO, or do you have any plans? We're investigating everything. But as of right now, you're correct. And along, along those lines, you said you hoped everybody comes back. It's kind of our job to say, do you expect everybody? I expect everybody back, okay. but I'll have individual meetings next week. Right. So. Well, some kids make up their minds relatively early. Yeah, that. yeah. That's why I'm kind of spacing it out this year. I'm kind of waiting um, till next week. You know, let everybody just relax. The emotions of a long season, um, and then we'll just we'll sit down, and we'll talk about roles, and we'll talk about what we got to work on and talk about their future and hopefully everybody wants to stay. Results aside, postseason, do you guys take advantage of that as much as you had hoped for? Did you see the guys really continue to work? This is what I liked about the postseason. Um, we were able to practice and, and continue to develop and work with guys. Um, still set the tone for what our program is all about continue to watch film like little things behind the scenes that maybe you guys don't understand we're able to continue to touch them uh, which which I thought was great and you're able to play look I played a ton of lineups um, in the last two games um, and just to give them that game experience I think can only help uh, I'm, I'm not 
uh, look, I'm disappointed with the Siena loss, but you, you know what? We got more minutes. We, we, we played a ton of guys. Um, they got more reps. I think we got exactly what we wanted from it. Do, do, do I wish I was playing Fresno State last night? Yeah, of course I do. But you know what? I, I think we got a lot out of what I was trying to accomplish. Was see what you know, get guys more minutes and keep practicing. <laughs> That's what you want as a coach. You never really want to stop practicing. You started in July, so what's what's next for you? Where are you vacationing? <laughs> I'm not telling you. <laughs> leave me alone. Where are you Please buying? Leave me alone. Where are you buying the drinks? <laughs> yeah, you know what? Off the record, I'd like to do that with you guys. After I'll, I'll get Alyssa to set that up. Um, but I, I'm looking forward to getting a couple days off and seeing my family and spending some quality time with them. A couple weeks. A couple weeks. If you had a wish list, you solidified point and base in terms of roster. What is missing? Or what would you like to see more solidified? I, I would tell you this. I like our team. I like everybody we have. We just need to make threes. We need to make some shots. We can only get so many stops, which we did for a long time. The Illinois game just keeps ringing in my head. Nine minutes of getting stops and stops and stops and stops with no scores, with no baskets. I mean, it just crushes you as a coach. You try every wrinkle, everything you can possibly think of. Um, even creating a new play just to try to get a layup. Uh, but we got to make some, we got to make some shots. We got to make some threes. We got to make at least seven a, a game. Worst case six, just to keep uh, defenses honest. You guys saw it. They had five guys in the paint. It was miraculous that we still got in there. It was. It was a miracle. But we we got to make some threes. And, and you know what? I want to put it inside. So Jordan, Jordan's going to get more touches. Donovan's going to get more touches. Ross is going to get more touches. And, and Brandon Taylor needs to really develop his inside game. How's that sound? Guys, great to see you. Thanks for a great year. I really appreciate it. And we'll get together after the season.